the FN Reflex. Let's check it out. When the SIG P365 was introduced, it changed the face of concealed carry. I mean, you had this Micro 9 that had 10 plus 1, which was much better than the 6 to 8 plus 1 that we were having before with some pistols that were actually much larger. During that time, a lot of companies have introduced their version of the Micro 9. And today we have the FN Reflex. This is an 11 plus 1 in a flush fit magazine, or you can get the finger groove, and then they have a 15 round magazine. There's a ton of different options that are out there, but we're going to take a look at some reasons why you might choose the FN Reflex over many others. And one that stands out to me is just the look of it. It's a beautiful handgun. And it has that FN quality, which also produces the FN Scar, the P90, the 5.7, 509, and a lot of other firearms, and they're contractors for the U.S. military for full auto machine guns. FN is definitely a legendary company, and they're made right here in South Carolina. Now, we want to thank GetZone.com for hooking us up with FN uh, to bring this review to you guys. And GetZone.com is one of the most Second Amendment video-friendly platforms out there. All right, guys, we have the FN Reflex, 9mm polymer hammer-fired pistol. This is an internal hammer. Uh, we're going to check the trigger pull on this over some of the others. So we're going to do some comparisons between them. Uh, again, a new offering from FN. Uh, this one is in the FDE. They also make the black version. This one did not come with optics ready, but they make optics ready for both the FDE and for the black version. Now, there are some things about this handgun that differentiate itself from some of the others. Let's look at it. It does have 11 plus 1, and so we're going to drop our 11 round magazine. Comes with the flush fit base pad, and then the chamber is empty. But it also comes with a 15 round with an extended uh, sleeve here, and so you have 15 plus 1 and 11 plus 1, and that comes with the gun. And then they have the pinky rest, which you can put on your standard magazine. This is what I actually use for this gun uh, because it just gives me a little bit of extra. Uh, in fact, if you'll look here, you've got just a little bit hanging off. Now, it's only part of my pinky, but my hands are, again, they're about medium size. So, you know, if you have larger hands, this is definitely going to be a little bit small in your hand, and then this will come into handy. And, of course, the 15-rounder gives you a full length on the grip. And so now... I've got a full 15 round magazine uh, and you know most of the subcompacts that we're getting these little micro nines are coming with those extended magazine uh, you know options and so that, that's another thing that's great so you can actually put this in your back pocket have 15 rounds available and then go with 10 rounds for more ultimate concealability. This is the part that prints right here it's your grip and so really having a shorter grip really makes a difference and even with the extended finger base plate uh, you know it comes out this direction here is where it prints now we have a 3.3 inch barrel it is cold hammer forged it gives it extended barrel life uh, it makes the grooves in the barrel more precise it's definitely something you want in any firearm but especially in these little small micro nines it's just a part of their quality has a PVD finish, and this is, again, the FDE. It's almost a gold finish, and just like with the scars, it's got that a little bit of a two-tone kind of look to it. Uh, and then the frame is a really nice polymer. Uh, you do have an accessory rail, and we have an enlarged trigger guard. 
the texturing is really well done, uh, you know, right here especially. You've got these typical FN type um, geometric shapes that really make this a very solid feel in your hand and they're on the front. Uh, but the difference is they've got this kind of a laser etched texturing here which gives it more of a bite. And so you've got two different grips going on, two different texturing. And if you take the original 509, and this is the 509C, but it's actually the tactical model. Uh, you have those aggressive geometric shapes, and even here we have pyramids. But they did come in with the texturing at your finger rest or thumb rest. And really, these are two completely different pistols. Uh, with the 509, it is a striker-fired pistol, uh, and it's larger. It's thicker, it's wider, which, you know, we've seen this over and over with your Micro 9s versus the full-size pistols. And so you can see that definitely for concealed carry, uh, the reflex comes in on top. Uh, but one of the things about a small Micro 9 is typically the larger pistols are easier to shoot. Uh, there's typically more muzzle flip. It's just a smaller handgun. You have less to grab hold of, but it's a trade-off. And so for concealability, these are excellent. Now, of course, this one has the big sights on the back and you know, you can take this off and put on a red dot and this one is threaded. So it's definitely a little different animal. And the Picatinny rail, you have three sections where you just have the one slot here. The mag release really throws the mags out. In fact, I mean, it, it really pops them out. Uh, and then you can switch this to the other side. It is steel. Uh, and then we have our slide release right here. It's a very minimal uh, surface to it. And I like that. And a lot of these Micro 9s are coming that way. We have our takedown lever, which goes in the up position. A lot of them go in the down position. This one just happens to go in the up position. And we'll look at that when we break it down. But a nice little grip angle here. The bore axis is fairly low. I like that. The sights have a two dot white sight at the back. And then we have a red circle, but we have a tritium insert in the front and it is dovetailed in. But a very slick, smooth finish. Nice serrations from the back and from the front. But one other plus about racking this slide is it's a lesser spring tension. And so it's a little bit easier to bring this back. So while the tension is less coming back, uh, it's definitely just a little bit of a pull over that last little hump and over the hammer. External extractor, uh, right here at the top, we have a loaded chamber indicator. So you can see the brass right through it, but there's no visual here on the side. This will probably stick out a little bit, but this is your loaded chamber indicator. It's really thin. In fact, it's one inch. Uh, and that's one of the things, guys, is thinness really counts for concealed carry. I carried the Glock Model 26 for years, and it's fairly thick. And it was doable, but this really allows you to get that very thin fit right next to your body, and it makes it just easier to conceal. Our serial number's right here, and it's actually in a plate. This is not necessarily a chassis system, uh, so, but the serial number is imprinted here. Then here, these are made in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, and they do make arms for the U.S. military and others. They are an arms manufacturer and a contractor. Now, before we get into some of the comparisons with some of the other handguns, uh, I do want to show the trigger pull because this is definitely a, an upgrade over a lot of the Micro 9s. One thing you'll notice is there's no trigger safety or the little blade safety. Uh, and so this actually does have a safety, but it's more toward the top. And there are a number of internal safeties on this handgun. But first, we're going to go ahead and check the trigger pull. It comes to a definite wall. I mean, it, it's a definite wall, and honestly, that's part of the safety. So a little bit of take up, you hit a definite wall, and then a really crisp break. There's no stacking, there's no resistance. Reset. It does come out quite a bit. That has to do with it being hammer fired. All right, let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Three pounds, 14.8 ounces. 3 pounds, 8.3 ounces. Now, FN says it's 4.5 to 5.5 pounds, uh, but we're consistently getting it right about that 4-pound range. We're going to bring out the usual suspects. We have the SIG P365, and then we have the Springfield Armory Hellcat. 
Now with the SIG P365, uh, it is a very small handgun. And it's 10 rounds compared to 11 rounds. We definitely have a little bit of a shorter barrel. Uh, I would say probably about uh, maybe a half inch, maybe just a little bit less. When it comes to the grip, the way the SIG comes down, it actually meets at the same place that the FN Reflex does. So we have just a little bit back here, but again, we still have one additional round. And as far as the width of the guns, I mean, they're pretty much the same. With the Springfield Armory Hellcat, just a touch. In fact, I think the barrel sticks out a little bit and it's about the same length barrel. Uh, it's just that the slide continues where the barrel comes out of the Hellcat. And then both of these are 11 rounds and honestly, they're right together. Uh, one of the funny things when I picked up the FN Reflex, I thought about the Hellcat as far as comparison. Uh, it just has that same feel to it. The grip angle is a, just a touch different. It comes in a little bit deeper, seems to right here. But honestly, overall, I mean, it's really close. And as far as the width, I mean, pretty much the same. The Hellcat has really nice laser etch texturing. Uh, here on the Reflex, it has a little more aggressive texturing on the side panels. And then you have those larger uh, geometric shapes on the front and back. Uh, with the SIG P365, it's actually a little more aggressive than the Hellcat. But I think that this is more aggressive on the side. But honestly, the front and the back are where you really get control of your gun. Uh, that's where you put most of the pressure on the front and back strap. So the side grips, while they do affect some of the controllability, this is really where it comes into its own right here when you're firing. But one thing to note is that the one slot on the FN is a lot longer than it is on the Hellcat. And so these are fairly difficult to find really small lights for. Uh, you're going to have a little more options with the FN. When it comes to the SIG, it's a proprietary rail system, so you don't have that option. As far as the FN with its serrations, um, I think it gives it a little more bite than the Springfield Armory or the SIG. Uh, and it's definitely less of a pull back compared to the two. The Springfield Armory has more of a pull to it. The SIG, actually a little bit less than the Springfield Armory, but the Reflex comes in with a lighter pull on the slide. Weight on the FN Reflex, 18.15 ounces. Weight on the P365, 18.48 ounces. Weight on the Springfield Armory Hellcat, 18.21 ounces. Guys, honestly, they're all about the same weight. Big thanks to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammunition. All made in the USA, one of the top suppliers of ammunition in the country. We shoot a lot of this stuff, and guys, it's very reliable, clean shooting, and we really enjoy it. Uh, and then also, big Lula Loader fan, and we appreciate Lula Loaders for saving our thumbs. Guys, it's great to see FN come out with a Micro 9. And uh, with the Reflex, guys, I'm telling you, that grip, that is one of the things that FN does to me probably better than anybody else. It's very aggressive, yet it's comfortable. Uh, beautiful finish. I love this kind of almost a two-tone finish on it with the gold or bronze and then the FDE. 11-round, uh, 15-round magazines. We're going to be using the 15 round right here, but uh, we've been shooting the 11 rounds all day. And it's just really um, low recoil. It's funny. It just kind of lifts up. It does. It's not really snappy. You know, and that's one thing that's inherent with the small micro nines is they can be a little bit snappy. I mean, you got a short barrel. Got nine millimeter coming out, but with the recoil system in this, it seems to really tame the recoil. And that grip does make a huge difference. The sights, you have that orange dot at the front with those two white dots, and it just shows up extremely well, even in conditions that are not so bright. I mean, we're out here in the bright sunshine, and these sights are showing up extremely well, almost like a fiber optic.
Trigger is nice. Uh, needs a little bit longer reset, which makes it a little bit different. But once you get used to it, it's great. I'll tell you, I've been really looking for FN to, you know, when they were going to introduce their Micro 9, and I'm not disappointed at all. I love the, the configuration. I love the size. just seems to fit in that good category. And it's going to make a great competitor with all the other Micro 9s. Again, guys, I mean, just flat shooting. It doesn't have that little snap. Now let's go for the disassembly, You're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, and it's empty. You want to bring your slide back into slide lock. And then we're going to take our lever and we're going to push it in the up position. Next, just release your slide lock and pull it directly off. You don't have to pull the trigger. Uh, we have our recoil spring system. We have double recoil springs that are intertwined. Take out our barrel. One thing they do also is highly polished feed ramp and chamber. Inside of the slide, it's pretty dirty. We have really put this one through the ringer. Uh, one thing you'll notice is this large cavity, and this is where the hammer comes up to hit your firing pin. So a little different than your standard striker fire systems. But overall, a very well machined. And one thing I noticed right up front was more beefy slide rails. Uh, they're a little bit thicker, they're a little bit more pronounced, they're a little bit longer in the back. And some polymer striker fire pistols have about half that much rail. So it gives you just a little extra rail. One thing you'll notice is with the hammer, and I'm going to go ahead and put my thumb on here and we're going to look at it. Uh, you know, fairly large hammer, uh, and then this works in that cavity in the back of your slide. And so this is really what allows you to get that better trigger pull because the trigger trips the sear and then allows the hammer to go forward. This is what they call a single action only hammer. And so as the slide comes back, it just recocks the hammer. For reassembly, I'm just going to throw our barrel back in, recoil spring and guide rod. Bring the slide back over your frame, go into slide lock, drop your lever. Throw in our magazine, test for function. And again, you get the FDE. Uh, you can get it with or without the optics cuts, and you can get the black version with or without optics cuts. You can also get the 10 round magazine option for states that aren't so free, but I'd really love that 11 or up to 15 round mag capacity. Manufacturer suggested retail price is $599. I'm seeing them around uh, for $549. Uh, you know, market price. When it comes to the SIG P365, I'm seeing them about 550 something like that. And, um, and you know, these prices definitely vary. Uh, and then when it comes to the Hellcat, about the same price, maybe just a little bit less. Uh, saw a couple of these for five and a quarter. But the Reflex is new. And so, you know, sometimes when they're new, they are a little more expensive because people are looking for them. Uh, from what I understand, the optics ready version is a little more difficult to get. So, in a sea of micro nines, what are some pros and cons? Uh, first off, uh, I really like the grip. Uh, this is a very textured grip. It's going to give you a lot of control over the firearm. Uh, also, because the recoil spring has been lightened a little bit to lighten the slide, it definitely has a little less muzzle flip than your SIG or, for that matter, the Hellcat. It, it just seems to be a, a little flatter shooting. Uh, the trigger, I really like the trigger with the hammer fired. It's going to give you a little bit more of a cleaner break, uh, but the reset is a little bit longer. So that's definitely a ding, uh, but not that bad. Of course, the fit and finish is FN. It's high quality, and they just make good quality firearms. It is a concealed carry option, so you want it to be small, but that makes the recoil actually just a little bit more uh, than your full-size counterparts. Uh, and, you know, even though the others are thicker, it's just a little bit of a larger handgun. Typically, they have a little less muzzle flip. And so that's just part of the concealed carry, and that goes across the board of all the concealed carry pieces. The Reflex actually has a really good recoil impulse. Uh, one thing, though, that and this is really subjective, but when I first saw the FN Reflex uh, and picked it up, 
I just thought this feels right. It feels right for a concealed carry option. Uh, it's ergonomic. It just has that right form factor to it. And I just really liked it as soon as I picked it up. And I handle a lot of these different micro nines. To be honest, any of these are excellent choices and there are others. Obviously, there's a number of different handguns out there that fit in this category that are just exceptional firearms. But I think the one thing that the Hellcat does with the internal hammer fired, it does give it a little better trigger pull. But then again, the reset's a little bit out. So guys, it's always a trade off whatever you're doing. But I think that the reflex really is one to take a look at. I, I just think that the way it's set up, the way it feels in your hand, and with that really smooth trigger, it makes an excellent concealed carry option. So guys, while there are a lot of different small little nine millimeter micro nines that are out on the market, uh, the FN carries that legendary quality. Uh, love the grip, love the look, and I love the way this gun shoots. So while FN was a little bit late coming into the micro nine market, I think they really hit a home run with the reflex. Decisions, decisions. But man, we have a lot of choices. And this just allows you to get your concealed carry option down to exactly what your preferences are. And again, a big thank you to GetZone.com for putting us together with FN and for FN for sending the reflex for this review. Guys, another carry option, but one that is definitely worth taking a look at. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. And guys, let's just face it, this is an effing reflex. It's gotta be pretty cool. <laughs> and made in South Carolina. Uh, and then they would be get and they would be getting larger, like be getting larger. <laughs> uh, check the chamber. Now we're gonna bring out the usual suspects. Uh, we have the pig or 15 round magazine. <laughs> I mean it has a lot of is this a 15?